Oh, it goes down today. It goes down. It goes down. Look at that background. We got Sarah versus McCall's. Sarah versus McCall's. Now, I'm going to show you the difference between a Sarah and a McCall. Now, we need women that are kingdom-minded. Because this is the thing. There is a VIP section in the heavenlies. And you have to have your name on one of the gates to come up in there. Okay? You have to know somebody that knows somebody. In other words, you have to be kin to get in. Now, the Israelites out here on the streets thinking just because they the old Israelites and they're going to be gathered back in. But no, Allah, no, no. Allah has other plans. Al-Mahdi has been instructed by Allah to raise up the tribes of Israel afresh. And every baby will have a halo over his head. And that baby will have his own gate. Okay? So the new Israel is coming from the father. The last Jacob, his loins. That's where the new Israel coming from. And so that's why in the days of Sarah, in order for her to have some inheritance, she knew that she had to let Ishmael come in there by allowing Hagar to sleep with Abraham. You see, Sarah was a woman that handled business. Let's go to Sarah real quick. Sarah wasn't perfect. She had flaws. She got corrected. But for the most part, this woman was righteous. Let's talk about Sarah. All right. Now check this up. Check this out. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Now she recognized that her husband was the father of many nations, okay? Now, it's the same thing with the messengers of Allah. Allah always is going to make sure that the wives of the messengers get set straight. Off top, they might struggle like David. He was struggling with McCall, okay? And he also was struggling with her older sister because his stepdaddy, King Saul, he gave him a daughter and took her back, gave him a daughter and then took her back twice. All right. But he ended up getting into a place where he needed to be. And see, Sarah was one of those women that understand it, that her husband was Lord. This has to be understood. If a woman don't understand this, she's going to incur double the wrath on her, okay? When you are the wife of a husband who is a messenger, you got to be on point, okay? Now, she recognized her husband was a Lord, calling him Lord, and then the scriptures say you're going to be her daughters as long as you do well. You're going to be her daughters. You got to be down to do what Sarah did. Sarah allowed her husband to have multiple wives. She did. It was her idea. She was down for the cause. She wanted to make sure that she got inside those heavenly gates. 
That's the thing y'all don't understand. Y'all don't understand that in the afterlife, there's heavenly gates. It's kind of like people out there on the streets trying to sell you insurance and life insurance and these policies and homeowners insurance and um, all type of insurances, okay? Even title insurance. Why? Because in the afterlife, it's like that. If you in the nation of Israel, you got VIP. You got VIP. And so Sarah wanted to make sure her VIP didn't just go void because she was getting old. Okay, so she was down for the cause. And right now it's the same thing. The father has come back to the planet. And now he has to restart the tribes of Israel. And so we need some Sarahs. Okay, that's why the Quran is called Surah. Surah. Okay. Now, the final witness is a Surah. Okay. Okay. That means she's down for the cause. She's going to be down for the cause. I've seen it. All right. It's a Sarah because she's a Surah. All right. She's going to be that final witness. She's going to be the mother of the witnesses. She's going to be the body of the witnesses. Now, you're only going to be called the daughter of Sarah if you're down for the cause like Sarah. All right. That's all I needed out of that. Now, also, I wanted to take you to McCall. McCall, this woman, she's something else, man. This woman, first of all, she dealt with jealousy. And we got to have a lot. We got a lot of women that deal with jealousy. She deals with jealousy. And before we get to McCall, let's let's go find a root issue. It's all because of USA. It's all because of the nation of Edom. And it's all because of, ultimately, Paul. Now, this is what Paul talks about when he talks about marriage. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 7, 1, Now, concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. First of all, now, for people who study the Bible, we know that the tribe of Benjamin is the tribe of Paul. And the tribe of Benjamin dealt with homosexuality on so many occasions to the point that they almost got exterminated. And everybody in Israel vowed not to take the tribe of Benjamin to have as a husband because they all were into homosexuality for the most part. And it doesn't take a person who has a PhD to see that Paul was dealing with those same traits, even as the former King Saul. King Saul had David go and circumcise 200 men. King Saul had a son named David, uh, named Jonathan, who stripped himself of all his royal robes and swords and gave them to David and loved him like his own soul. To the point that the love that they had surpassed the love of women to the point that today we have homosexualities trying to justify homosexuality because of the relationship between Mr. Benjamin, Jonathan and David. OK. The tribe of Benjamin dealt with homosexuality. It's in the book of Judges. OK. They wasn't supposed to be here because the Lord of the Bible wanted them exterminated. And they had to be restarted because they was almost wiped out. And it was by the Lord. The Lord ordered that decree. All right, because they came from the nation of Paul, which came from the nation of Christianity. So as we can see right here, in verse 2 is bingo, is where women feel like they're equal to men. They feel like, look, 
you don't deserve to have no other wife and I don't deserve to have no other man. And that's how they look at it. And it's all because of the teachings of Paul and because the nation of Edom, the white race has been promoting this more than anybody. The white man knows he's entitled to just one wife. Okay. He's been living by that mode and he's been setting this whole uh, custom up like this. All right. And that's why a lot of our brothers got a problem with cheating and being the players because they have grandfathers and forefathers that's uh, had four, five, six, seven women running around the house. Okay. They come from ancestors who had four women. Okay. So it's in their bloodline to want to have more than one. And this is all ordained by God because of the teachings of Paul. Women have become like Eve. She wanted to be like Adam. She wanted to become like God. And therefore, she was jealous of the power that Adam had. And it's the same thing with women today. A woman feel like you and her is 50-50. And it's not true. It's not. It's not. That's the reason why we can have multiple wives and you can't have multiple men. You can't have multiple husbands. No, because it's a difference between me and you. And we need women that are kingdom minded because think about it. Think about it. Let's say I'm married. And I'm sitting on money. Now I'm in a point where. I'm finna do some reconstruction. All right. I'm sitting on it. I'm in a place where I can have my multiple wives and restart the tribes of Israel. You see what I'm saying? We need a woman that's down for the cause that's not finna be jealous and be like, you know what? That's what's up. And then all four of us, okay, however, Allah lays it down. I know for a fact, three for show from Mexico. But however he lays it down, we all become a family. We all be, we all bond. We all have one another back. We all live as a family. We all help one another out. It's like it's a stronger bond. It's, you know, the teamwork makes the dream work. Instead of just being so selfish, going to eat your little hot dog by yourself in the corner somewhere. No, man, we kingdom building. You know, this is a family. This is your husband. You want your husband to be pleased. You want your husband's toes to jiggle. You ought to love your husband so much that you want him to have his very best ecstasy. But because of the teachings of Paul, these women want you, you know, to do the opposite to them. But it's supposed to be the other way around. And we're going to do that. I'm telling you, man, um, when I get into power, man, we're going to put women in a place. We're going to have a real Adam. A real Adam is going to rise up. Allah. And I, and I thank God for Allah for uh, training me and, and giving me this wisdom. First of all, we're going to polish up the silver. That's the versions. The virgins are going to have way more value than the women that have already had babies and have already had sex. And it's hard for us to retrain women that's already had a husband and a boyfriend and been raped and things like that. It's hard for us to retrain them because they're set in their own mind to survive. And they don't want to listen to what a man has to say because they never been taught and their mom has been lashing out at their their dad. So there's never been no real Adam to just stand up and and be hard on a woman and 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 and, and let the hand be strong. Okay. Even if you have to go down to a like a mat, okay, you have to get physical. In the Quran, we can get physical with the women. But in the Bible, you got to be a little hush puppy. You see what I'm saying? And the guy in the in the Quran, we can get we can get to be like a little Mac, like, a you know, and put the pimp hand down. But in 
in the Bible, you know, it's 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 a different story. All right, so going on, we got to put an example of a father and a man. You taking care of business, you handling family, paying bills, you doing what you have to do, you financially able to be able to have to okay if you ain't don't even think about it bro get your weight up get your weight up and then yeah but we need women to be more cool and that's why it's so amazing how Allah led me um and guided me I went through a period where you know if the knowledge was there man I could have done some things, but Allah chose different um, paths for me. But this is the thing, man. This is the reason why these girls in the streets is down with it. Because the truth about the whole thing, a woman is supposed to listen to her man on anything. On anything. A real woman is going to listen to her woman on. A real woman is going to listen to her man on all things. She going to stand with him. She going to die with him. Okay? They come in to shoot up the house. She she ain't finna she going to she going to stand by her man. Okay? The ship is about to sink. She going to stand by her man. Okay? That's the definition of a real widow. That's why a widow, let me tell you something. A widow ought to be referenced. A real widow that is staying a widow for life, okay? She's the definition of monotheism. She was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Men can have more than one wives, but a wife can't have more than one man. So here it is. My man is gone. I ain't finna get no other man because I only have one God. But you see these women that have had somebody and then they get another man uh oh watch out you done if you already on man number two it's go it ain't gonna work it ain't gonna work because man number one didn't work if man number one doesn't work man number two ain't gonna work man number three ain't gonna work man number four ain't no work ain't gonna work because a man was because a woman was only made for one she was only made for one. Okay. When you come behind a woman who's already had a man, you're going to take all his garbage, all his mess. All right. She's going to be already strained out from him. And it just ain't going to work. And a woman who does that, that wants to be riding around like a used tire, you already done been with A, B, you know, C, D, you, you, on, you on your fourth tire. You on your fourth tire. You on your fourth dick. You on your fourth tire, okay? You, 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 didn't, you didn't flat it three tires. You on your fourth tire to flat. And think about it. And we in a religion that promotes cleanliness. If we already didn't have babies, you got a mixture about four different men's come swimming in there. All those different sperm cells that you can't wipe and can't flush out. That's just still in you because you had sex with four or more. Okay. How should another man look at you when you dressed uh, with your booty out and your titties out and you you showing your, your big, nice camel toe? Okay. Um, Okay, how are, we, how are we supposed to look at you? You already got all this going on. Should we should be trying to look at you for sex? No, 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 no. I teach the men when I get into my place. No, don't look at that. That's another man's problem. Okay, let that man drink water out of his own well. He already got about four different men's waters in there, all right? 
Get you a virgin, get you some fresh water wells. That's why Allah has instructed me to start off the tribes of Israel with virgins. Okay, I'm the definition of a man being rewarded. Christmas was all about me. All these holidays, all these holidays revolve around the S-U-N. Okay. They was right when they was thinking that it was thinking that it was about Jesus. It's about his father. <laughs> Christmas is not about Jesus. It's about his father. Duh. Okay, the father has to unwrap some virgins, okay? He's the fat, get it, fat man father. He was white because he was a white stone that was whiter than milk, but now, okay, he's black. But in Merry Christmas, he's white, okay? He was whiter than milk. That's why he eating the cookies. <laughs> All right. And he has some gifts to unwrap under the tree because he is the tree. He is the source of the tribe of Israel. You see, Al Maddy is not from the tribe of Judah no more. He's not from no, no tribe. Because you know what tribe he's from? He's from the tribe of Jacob. He's got to start off all the other tribes. <laughs> he's the eraser. Okay. So going back to the women, you can have so much fun, man, when it's like one, two, you know, two, three, four, man. That's that's fun. That is fun. That's accountability. Okay, there's no dull moment in the house. We having fun. We uh husband has to go over here. Okay, we for girls finna go over here. We finna do this. We finna. I mean, come on, man. It's so much fun when you're not thinking about yourself. Okay, and it also says in Islam that people that mix their lives with other people are going to be rewarded more than the people that want to be secluded, you know, just me, my wife, and uh, my son and daughter, just us four and no more and, and live a selfish life. Now, it may happen to be like that, okay? But when you were a person who has royal blood and has, you know, royal genes, and this man has to procreate, um, then, you know, you have to be that Sarah versus that McCall. Now, let's deal with McCall. We're going back to her. We ain't letting her escape. We ain't letting her escape. She was a liar. Saul was trying to kill David, and she had David back. But she lied. She said David was trying to kill him. <laughs> kill her. And that wasn't true. All right, so here we go. All right. All right. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city, McCall Saul's daughter looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in all her heart. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And, and David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And as soon as David had made an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he dealt among all the people, even among all the whole multitude of Israel, as well to the women as men, to everyone a cake of bread and a good piece of flesh, a flage and a wine. Okay, because David has got the key to all of that. 
So all the people departed every one to his house. Then David returned to bless his household. And Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of his handmaids of his servants, as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. Now, this was a Michal. This was one of these right here. Okay, this was a McCall. Let's see if we can get a sound of McCall. All right, let's see if we can get a sound of McCall, bird. All right. Yes, I do. Yes, that is. I like that. <laughs> hey, you've got hmm. a few more pieces. You know, he gets a little flat. <laughs> Really loves something, yeah. too. <laughs> That's precious. That was one of them. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> That's his ah. very civilized hello. Yeah. He also has the sort of ah. British, the British news hello. He goes, oh, does terribly he? Terribly nice. Hello. <laughs> oh, and then he ah. goes, Hi. finishes off with Are you taking a video of it? Yeah. Ah. What is okay. It? No? Yep. That's an hello. Oh, that's an hello. Okay. Okay. Hi. One of those is. One of those macaws. Now check this out. Now check this out. Let's just keep it real. Your husband is the king. You live in glorious. You know for a fact that God is the one who told a man he can have more than one wife. And you being jealous who do you hate? You don't you don't hate David. You don't hate David. You hate the Lord. Okay. David is be, being the armor bearer for the hatred you have for Almighty. And see, that's one thing I do not like about Christianity because they make you feel like you a bad man and you a creep. Because you are interested in having more than one wife. And, and it's all through the Bible. These same people that talk crap about the Quran. They scared to even touch the Quran. They talk about how much they hate white people. But they won't even touch the Quran. Just like white people won't touch the Quran. Some of them will touch the Quran. I ain't saying all of them won't. But here we have this um, mentality in these women where they feel like um, they have to be just as equal with their man. And they do that even thing. Oh, if you do this, I'm going to do that. If you do this, I'm going to do that. All that stuff is Satan. All that stuff is Paul. All that stuff is Satan. All that stuff is Paul. Because for one, your life revolves around your man. Now, let me show you the definition of a Sarah. And we'll come back to this girl. We'll, we'll show you the end of her later. All right. This is the definition of a real woman. All right. Now, Judas, she was a beloved woman. This woman had a husband who was wealthy. Her husband died. She was a widow. That's a real woman. That's a real woman. That's a real woman, okay? That's a real woman. You know, let me tell you something. If a woman already had a man and she want another man, she ain't going to be happy with that man. 
And that's just real talk. It's just like a used tire. Okay. All right. It's just real talk. I, I have real life relationship health. Okay. I have the wisdom. Okay. I have the wisdom to tell you the real truth. Okay. Now, Judith was a widow. That was the strength of her whole ministry. Judith was a woman who feared God. She was a woman that was in the word. She was a woman that fasted every high holy day. But the strength of her, her ministry was that she she looked good. And let me tell you something. Looking good, ain't nothing wrong with that. Women try to act like it's a sin for you for a woman to look good. Ain't nothing wrong with a woman looking good. Look good. Look the best. Okay? Look good. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It's just we had this way that came around where um, the BBW start popping off and we got these big old booties and pear-shaped and, and thick and then came in, but that wasn't how the Indians was. That wasn't how our people was. Our people was petite. You know, it's just like T-Pain. You know, the the booty was, was fat enough. It, it, it wasn't a whole trash can lid. You see what I'm saying? We didn't got to a point where we didn't went out to eat so much that we have accepted being overweight. Okay? But that's not how our people was. And the Bible would single out some women for their beauty. Some women were tender-eyed. Some women were fair. Some women were rare. Some women were beautiful. And Judith was one of the women that was dropped, dead, gorgeous, and was a widow and had men, had people that was all in the clergy, all in the church, trying to holler at her her whole life. And she told him no because she recognized that there's only one God. And my husband was a picture of him. So what I look like getting another husband. You see what I'm saying? That's the kind of woman that a real Sarah is. A real Sarah is a Bonnie and Clyde um, type relationship woman. Okay? A real Sarah is a woman that her whole life revolves around her husband. Let me tell you something. Allah loved me so much that he saved me. He saved me. If it wasn't for me, we would be in judgment. If it was up to you, we would be hit. And I'm not saying that arrogantly. I'm just telling the truth. Now, if he did that for me, to save you, to give you nine years, how would you treat your husband after he did that for you? If your husband was the man that gave you nine more years before you have to go into judgment, how would you treat him? That's why it's no big deal by me being the rock, surrounded by the silver, surrounded by the virgins, okay? All right, this is my world, all right? Y'all my guests, and it will go down. Um, the tribes will come out of New Mexico. All right. And I showed you, Judith, um, other things about a woman. Okay. First of all, you got to deal with that insecurity and that jealousy. We need to help this gay culture. We have a lot of men that are interested in men. So we need women to understand men liking women. 
You're supposed to be excited when a man sees you and he's attracted because that's the kind of man we want all over. So if you a woman and you got a real man, he taking care of you. You shouldn't trip about him admiring another woman's beauty. You're not the only one that's beautiful. Okay. And you are not permitted to have another husband. So you suppose your whole world is around your husband. It's a man's world. It is. It's a man's world. And we need some more ride or die type women that are spiritual. Okay. All right. Now, if you have a messenger as a husband, you got to take care of the house. You got to hold the house down before you go and shopping, before you out um, hanging out all day, sitting around. You know what I mean? Doing whatever. No, you can't be doing that. Uh-uh. When you got a messenger as a husband, there's a certain way. You have to treat him. Did you know that when you have a sultan as a husband, um, there's certain times your husband is off limits. Even the children, okay? There's a certain honor that you got to have for your husband. I mean, you 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 can liably die in certain empires approaching the king. They have to put out the scepter towards you. So there's a whole lot of reverence and a whole lot of respect because, because of the Bible, the back part of the Bible, where the yeast bread is, the bread that rise, the teachings of Paul, a woman has literally has went into this what a girl wants, what a girl needs. Um, culture. It all came from Paul. Okay? Women are hypocrites. I better not hear no woman say she hate Paul. They love Paul. Paul is the one that told them only a, a man can get one wife. He was the one that told us that. Nobody else told us that. Only Paul. And these phony Israelite camps try to say, oh, Jesus said it too. No. Jesus just said that they both won. He didn't teach on marriage laws. He said he didn't come to destroy the law of Moses. Okay, Paul was the only one that came with some new commandments. Jesus didn't, all right? He said he didn't come to destroy the law of Moses. And when he said, I give you new commandments and all that stuff, all that stuff was metaphors for the law of Moses. Jesus didn't, didn't come with no new law. No, he didn't. He never destroyed the law of Moses. Paul thought he was me to be able to do that. I will revise the law, Al Matty. And women, allow your man to respect beauty. Respect beauty. Okay? He taking care of you. Okay, he's got the stamina. Okay, all right. He's taking care of you. He see another woman. He shouldn't have to be nervous to be able to say, hey, you're beautiful. Because we want the kids to be able to see that a woman is beautiful. Okay. And this one to one, 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 one stuff has created a gay nation. Yes, it has. There's more women than men. For a long time, it's been like that, okay? And it's been like that because there was nothing wrong with that, all right? And I was thinking about um, women that are baby killers, all right? It's all because of this one, 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 okay? Just think about it. They get it with one person, have a baby, don't want it, throw it away. Get with one person, have a baby. No, 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 what's up? What's up? 
What's up? Why you keep getting with one? Why everybody keep getting with one person having a baby and then killing it? Something is not right. Okay. That that one to one promotes so much more abortion than you really thought. It does. People are not happy with one person. That's the reason why people break up and they move to the next person. Men are not happy with one woman. That's why they breaking up with one woman and they go into the next. Okay. A woman needs to recognize that she should only have one flag inside of her. That's her goal in life. Two, three, four, five, six different comes in you. Ew. 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 God set it up for a man to release it. And Allah set it up for a woman to receive it. And there ain't no way you can keep wiping and squirting and, and cleaning and spraying. You got other men's germs inside of you. Even if you're going past the one. That's why Judith on the screen, this woman was honorable. Because even though she looks so good, and she could have had another man, okay, she chose to stay single. Now, she did more, more heroic acts, okay? She killed Babylon's leader, Holofernes. She cut off his head. Okay. She corrected her own people. She had more wisdom in the scriptures and corrected them for putting the time limit on God. Yeah. She was going off, man. Judah did a whole bunch of things, but the number one thing Judah did was she stayed with the same man. Regardless, she stayed with the same man. Even when he was in the ground. Even when she was feeling like having some. She didn't do it. Okay. Trust me. Everybody was looking at that woman. Everybody was looking at that woman. Okay. That's, that's the most... Um, honor a woman can do is the how she treats her husband. So, like I said, um, women definitely need to get past um, of being equal with a man. You're not equal with me. You're not. You've never been. You've never been equal with me. You never have been equal with me. There was always things I could do that you could not do. <laughs> there you see it. I see it right here. Come in here. I, you know what I'm going to do. Come here. <laughs> Come here. Come in here. Here we are. Oh, you're on just step up. Come on, step. They go to Macaw, so now here we go. And David said unto Macaw, It was before the Lord which chose me before your father and before all his house to appoint me ruler over all the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore, Will I play before the Lord? Now, let's just think about a lot of people that's jealous and jello that Al Maddie is black. 
that's how I'm going to have to say something like that to some people. It was Allah who chose me before your prophet. Before your prophet. Let's speak Arabic. With the same blood as you. And that's what he had to tell. He had to tell McCall. He said, look, it was God who chose me over your daddy. He, he checked her. He was like, look, I got the royal blood in me, not your daddy. Okay. And, and I say this, and I say this humbly, and I say this for all the other races. It's me that got the royal blood. It's me that's got the royal blood. And that's what David had to tell McCall. You see, women, I'm going to come back to this. You got to recognize that it is all about your man. All about him. To the point you you didn't throw up the middle finger at your people. Practically, you did. I ain't telling you to, but practically you did. Because watch this, I'm going to show you. Look at this. We are in Psalms 45. Verse 10. Look what, look what David says. Hearken, O daughter, and consider and, and incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people in thine father's house. Why? Because you got these women, okay? By nature, they attracted to their own race, okay? By nature, okay? They track they attracted to their own race. And so they want to keep that same that same code by going with their same race that there are. But David is telling this woman, he said, "Looky here, baby. Ain't nothing going on in your father's house. He ain't got the royal bloodline." Hey, I got the royal blood, and you going to be my vine, okay? You got to forget all about your dear, your dad, your granny, and all that. You finna, you finna ride out with me, okay? I didn't came over, and I didn't took over. It's all about me now. You ready? You ready to ride? And she's like, okay, okay, all right? And Rebecca, she was like that. When it was time for her to go with Isaac, they was asking. Ellie, Eliezer, hey, can she stay a little bit longer, you know? And, and, and Rebecca was like, uh-uh, I'm ready to go with Isaac. I'm ready to go. He didn't give me some earrings, bracelets. Come on, it's time to, it's time to roll. <laughs> That's the type of women that are pleasing to the real men. We want some Sarahs. We want some Judas, you know? Women that are willing to be widows if we had to go. You know, we want some women who who laugh and 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 joke when their husband sees another woman that is attracted to them. You know, that's some of the most funnest stuff when you got a woman that, you know, that knows you like what you like. Come on now, you know I like it. You know I like it. You know you know what I like. So why do I have to be this little Christian man that's living in the closet? Why can't I just keep it real? All right? And that's what I love about Allah. He, he does not restrict the messenger of having any woman he wants. According to the Quran, al Mahdi is the one who told the Prophet Muhammad, he can have any woman he wanted, okay? This is how we do it, man. This is how we do it. And we need women that just understand that and they want to bond with the girls that they man pick out to get pregnant. You want to bond with them and be cool with them, man. Y'all challenge each other. Y'all exercise and stay in shape. Y'all challenge one another. Y'all share me. Y'all love me. And I have one of those hearts that I can love multiple women. I can love them all and treat them all the same. 
Okay, I have that type of heart where I can do that. I'm the type of person where I don't go through a person's phone. I don't try to control them. No, I don't. I want to know what's going on. I don't want you doing stuff behind my back. But hell no, I ain't finna be uh, going to jail for putting my hands on no woman. I ain't running through your phone. If it's over, I'm just out. You know what I mean? You know, I'm chill. Okay, I'm chill. I, I love Allah. I, I love the ministry of doing an exhortation every day. Is is all because of the nation that eat them. It's all because of Christianity and the teachings of Paul. We need women, man. It's, that's sold out serious, man. That's why I like movies like Set It Off. Because in the movie of Set It Off, those women all bonded with Queen Latifah. They all bonded. You know what I mean? And women just need to get away from Edom's ways. You talk about how you don't like um, white culture, and we're not promoting racism, but you talk about how you don't like white culture, and look at you. You won't touch the Quran just like them. You don't believe that a man can have multiple wives just like them. You want your husband to do what you say just like them. You just like them. Okay. And and we need to and and that's the real truth. We got some macaws and we got some Sarah's. And now let's see the fate of this girl. Let's go back to the fathers. David said, forget your own people. Now here we go again. Let's start off in verse... 10 again. Hearken, O daughter, and consider and incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people and thy father's house. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty. For he is your Lord, and worship thou him. Don't you know that the whole time that prayer was going up, the Salat and all prayer and worship and intercession was going straight to al Mahdi. And then the al Mahdi would take all of that and prostrate all of that before Allah. You never were serving Allah. <laughs> priest. All right. Um, the ultimate priest. That's how it works. That's why uh, Bilal was on top of the Kaaba. That's how it works. Okay. Now, going down, that's just amazing. That is. That's why it says, worship thou him. He is your Lord, your king. Okay. This is going into al Mahdi. This is going into God the Father. This is not just anybody. This is God the Father. God the Father had to come back to the earth. Okay. So now he's got a woman and he's saying, look, he's your Lord. Worship me. I'm God the Father. <laughs> okay, I just came down here <laughs> in the line of Christianity. It's not, it's not contradicting. All right, this is the same God the Father. That's why it says, worship thou him. Now watch this. And the daughter of Tyree shall be there with a the gift, even with the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is of raw gold. Raw gold. Now, for me, because I'm Almaty, I can see what that scripture is going into. Allah gives me the desires of my heart. Let me tell you something. There's some things that I like on a woman. 
I'm going to be honest. There are some particular traits that I like on a woman, man. Like, I like these traits. And Allah has already re revealed to me. And I've already seen, okay, the traits that I'm working with. And all I can just do is just praise Allah and say, Allah, when I see that, I know you gave that to me because that's my heart's desire. Like, you know, that's what I like. Like, and that's like, yeah, the little cherry on top of the cake. <laughs> Going down. So when it says the king's daughter is all glorious within, it's not just talking about an outfit. It's talking about some intricate details going on. Then he goes on to talk about she shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins, her companions that follow her shall be brought unto thee. So he's saying, look, hey, your friend's coming with me. Your friend's coming with me. Why do you think all our brothers is singing all these trap songs? Okay. All right. You can bring your friend. Hey, but you can bring your friend. You can because this is all coming from David. This is how David got down. David had multiple women in his palace, all getting pregnant at the same time, nursing his babies. This is what David did. That was a man. What do you think God the Father going to do? All right. The plans Allah has for me is amazing. Let's go on. With gladness and rejoicing shall they be brought. They shall enter into the king's palace. Instead of thy father shall be thy children. So he told you to forget your own people. Why? Because now your children about to have a different father than your own people. So now you got to make it be all about your man. But see, these women want to be with their own nation, get with a man, and be with their own nation. No, when you get with a man, be with his nation. Be down with his nation. It's all about his nation. The Bible says, forget your own people. So if you one of them women that don't want to forget your own race, then you ain't that woman that Allah has called to be the virgins that Allah has picked down for al -Madi. You not with it. Because you're going to have to forget your own people. Let me tell you something, and I ain't trying to be mean. But there's nothing in the white culture. There's nothing in the white race. There's nothing in the African race. Bless my brothers. There's nothing in the Mexican race. There's nothing in the Arabian race. There's nothing in the Chinese race. There's nothing in nobody's race but one man. The one man whom Allah lifted up by the hand. I have to die in my loins to restart the tribes of Israel. Okay, me, just me, all right? Only me, I can do this. And so with all that being said, a woman has to recognize her husband's position, his financial um, capability. And also she has to realize that her husband is not gay. And a man that's not gay, we 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 like women. Now, I'm not telling you to covet after somebody else's uh wife. I don't preach that. Okay. Me personally, I'm off limits. I'm off limits. Allah has me surrounded by the virgins. I ain't messing with nobody that's got no, I ain't, I ain't messing with nobody. And I don't promote adultery. But what I'm saying is, I don't promote women hating that God says a man can have more than one woman. That's what I don't like. You need to just keep it real and get that tattooed on you. You just need to keep it real and get a t-shirt that say that. You need to keep it real 
and manifest your hatred towards him because it's God Almighty. All right. And it's even in the Quran. In the Quran, they can have four. If they can treat them right, they can have up to four. The Prophet Muhammad can have as many as he wanted. <laughs> so you know how many al can get? <laughs> All right. So women, women, let's, let's not be these macaws. Now let's see what happened to her at the end. Let's let's see what happened to this this uh Michael. Let's see what was the end for her. All right. Verse 22, and I will yet be more vile than thus, and will be based in my own sight, and of the maid servants which thou hast spoken of. Of them shall I be had in honor. Okay, so he basically said, look, these other women is about to honor me more than you've been honoring me anyway. And he said, you know what? If you think I was really um, showing off my, my, my junk mail, I'm going to get more vowed than this. Okay? He recognized this. of how Al Matty would come back and be like, okay? And because of this, therefore McCall, the daughter of Saul, had no child until the day of her death. So, in other words, she didn't get to get into the them gates. She did not get to get into the gates of 12 tribes VIP. You want to know why she didn't? Because she didn't have no children. You got to have children, all right, in order to be able to go through those gates. And I'm going to prove that to you. Right time, first time in the Bible. All right, let's get it. All right. All right. So here we go. Here we go. That in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And your seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. You see that? So. In order for you to be able to go through those 12 gates, you have to be from the bloodline of Israel, okay? And it was like that back then. There was a certain bloodline you had to go through to get through the gates. And so that's why Sarah was okay with him having Hagar. Same thing with Jacob and Bilhah, Zilpah, and Leah and Rachel, they all knew that Jacob had the ladder to heaven. And so they knew that it was worth being with him because they all would have VIP in the afterlife. You see, the women of that day understood because they had knowledge. But there ain't nobody teaching that the bloodline of David, the babies he make, open up the gates of VIP in the afterlife. But see, now that knowledge is here. The Bible says that the knowledge of the Lord is going to cover the earth like the waters cover the sea. I'm going to say that again. Now, in order for you to have VIP in those gates, then that means you have to come from my bloodline. All right. So therefore, the virgins that I sleep with, that's going to be a bridge for their bloodline to come through. And that's going to be my children. All right. 
So they're opening up the gate. Every virgin I mess with is going right in those gates. All right? This is why Jacob had four wives. This is the reason why Abraham had two wives. This is the reason why David had all these wives. This is the reason why Solomon had all these wives because their bloodline opened up the VIP gates. <laughs> and so, you know, women, stop talking about these white girls when you acting like these white girls. Stop talking about them when you won't touch the Quran. Stop talking about them when you acting just like them. You get mad when your husband look at a girl that got a booty. You should be happy he like booty. Okay? You should be happy he like booty. Don't make a big deal about it is all I'm saying. All right? We want these boys to not be gay. And half of the time, y'all trying to show off every damn thing the way y'all dress anyway. That's why I always admired the women of Arabia. The best thing that the Arabs have is women covered up. That's the best thing they have. Best thing they have. The women of today are hypocrites. They trying to show every crack, every crevice. They scared, they insecure. They don't have an idea of what it is to have a man that is your daddy. You got a man that's your lord. You got a man that's your daddy. Whatever he say, go. You ain't got no say so. He tells you whatever to do. Whatever. Okay? And the women knew their place. And we got to bring that all back. So there you have it. I didn't gave it to you. I gave you the end result of Mr. McCall. Mr. Yeah, she wanted to be a man. Um, she didn't bear no children, so she didn't get to go into the VIP. Every daughter. I got three virgin daughters of Mexico to get pregnant, and they are going into a perfect place in VIP. Oh, man, I'm telling you. It's like going to a game, and you're getting seated, and they got all these roles, and you got the best spot. All right, that's how it's going down. And of course, we have connections with those that are in the family and connected to the family and those who will be rewarded. Um, according to the Quran, there will be people that are going to enter the gardens and Allah knows what's best and Allah knows that the righteous will be blessed as well. But there is a VIP section. <laughs> you should notice this in the parties. There's always a, there's always a VIP section. There's always a VIP section. And we have that VIP section here. In the house of David. Women, step your game up. Women, step your game up. Women, step y'all game up. The way y'all doing these men is bad. All right, y'all starting fights, y'all hitting men, okay, y'all tripping, all right, y'all not satisfied with y'all bodies, you getting, you getting, um, the dang on, uh, what's the thing that the, uh, the eyelashes, uh, the tattoos, the piercings, you know what I mean, y'all just, you just going crazy, man. You know, you want to be out and about, can't sit in the house without somebody seeing you. You've been ran through with this dude, this dude, this dude, and you still want somebody to see your frame. Old enough to be a grandma wearing them leggings. Come on, man. Stop it. Stop it. These women, man, need help. That's why I am the Bilal on top of the Kaaba, and I've been looking at the Arabian nation, okay? I'm going get me an Arabian nation, all right? I'm going to have some Arabian daughters. I've always admired the way they dress compared to all other races, 
all other races. And I'm so ready to love on my people, the Arabs. I am like David that was on top of the Kaaba. And I looked down and I seen Bathsheba, the religion of Islam, the Arabs, uh, the way they live. And I came over there and I took her from the imam. <laughs> Just like David. No wonder that is a story in there. 